In this example, we're going to take an infographic and convert it into a vector file. You can see here the starting point and the finish point where we'll end in this tutorial today. We can also change it to have multiple colors. To begin, I'm gonna take the infographic layer and change the opacity down to about 15%. That's just so that we can see through it and I'll lock that layer. We'll then start with creating our circles. I see the outer circle and I'll just drag that ellipse down below underneath and line it up. It's fairly close, but using the shift key, I'll grab the corners and just pull them in so that it lines up as close to possible to the original. Next, selecting the circle that we just made, I'm going to control C and V and paste that circle and then drag it down to be the inner circle. And then I'll copy and paste the inner circle and pull it out to be the shaded area. So now you can see we have our three circles. I'll take the outer circle and the inner circle and then using the subtraction function, we'll eliminate the inside of that. Next, I'll use the rectangle tool to put the spaces in between each of the wedges. I'll start with the vertical one. I will copy and paste that and rotate it. I'll do this just to make sure that they're all the exact same width. I'll then move the, ver or the horizontal line to be lined up in the middle. I'll take that and I'll copy and paste it and rotate it. And again, copy and paste. As I rotate, I also hold down the shift key, keep the rotation constraints on 45. Now selecting all lines, I will use the shape tool to unite them and combine them together. So now we have one shape that represents kind of that crisscross star. I will use that with the last wedge shape and merge those or subtract those two so that the star comes out and now we're left with this design. Now use the inner circle along with a copy of the outer object that we just created and I will do an intersection. So now I have the inner lines and the outer lines. I'll just change the colors so that you can see the difference between the two of them. And there we go. To add text, we'll use the text tool and we'll create text boxes for each of the text elements. With the text tool, you can choose different fonts, different boldnesses, and different sizes. We can also do justification, and we will look at line spacing when we get to the body text. Notice how the text doesn't quite fit into the box as I made it bigger, so we'll just drag the bottom. To move the text, you need to select away, and then you can select back on the text to get the handles to move the text. I'll create a bunch of sample text for our body text and here I'll play with the line spacing and the font size to make it fit. I'll also adjust the text so that it lines up with the text spacing from the sample. Now I will lock the background layers so that they don't move and then select the text and we'll just copy it for each of the locations. We'll do that three more times, four more times and then we'll end up with our final image. The keys when creating an infographic are to look at how can I make it with different shapes and how can I combine shapes together by either adding or subtracting elements to make new objects. When I look at this object, I notice it looks like a donut. So a large circle on the outside with a circle cut out of the inside and then wedge lines in between that are subtracted from that circle. Another way we could have looked at it, we could have created one wedge, put all the elements in and then rotated that one wedge six different times to create six wedges.